what, what, tell, tell me about the uh, research. So we, we've been raising uh, our first round of funding. So we, we've actually done quite well there. We've raised uh, at this point the majority of the funds. Um, we're still looking for investors. So if anyone's interested. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, and it's, uh, it's all, also all of our first time starting the company. Yeah. Well, welcome. You're going to find um, the, the, the network here and the resources we have are going to be great. So we're glad you're here. And, and uh, guys, if, if you have questions about the, the jump they made or what they do, by the way, I think what you're doing in the service is so important. I just had a friend die who had an amazing story, and, and I know much of that isn't going to be memorialized or translated. Just because they didn't do it. And one other thing, one other person. Yes, forget. please. Okay, I got this real quick. Uh, Martha, and I'm glad that we got to meet just briefly. You tell me a little bit about what you're doing, and it's about community as well. Can you just give us a little snippet of what's going on? Yes, and you know. Okay, okay. Uh, my name is Martha Gamboa. I'm the founder of Friendly. It is a social club for women over 50, subscription based. What we're addressing is the lack of regular social interaction. The lack of human connection that now is afflicting our society, but we're focusing on women over 50. So you can go to www.friendly.com to see what we're about, and we're about to build an app. Thank you. How did you hear about us? Uh, through Friendly, actually. Thanks for being here. Hey guys, that's a good reminder. Tell your friends about what we're doing. Let's sit, let's get the old game back and bring in some new people. And uh, this is a great way to get your get your project started. Good to see you guys. Tristan, back to you. Yes, thank you. And I'm actually going to have CC come up and say a little bit about the new and improved founder space. I'm all seven in the river, so I don't get echo. Thank you. Thank you guys all for being here. Uh, I'm CQ with Founder Space. I'll keep this really brief. Uh, we officially opened May 1st. We're, so we're about a couple of minutes, uh, months in. We're really excited to have you guys here. Um, I'm here as a resource. If you guys have any questions about uh, any memberships or the stay here, feel free to come You know, say hello, and I'm, I'm happy to answer any of your questions. We have a couple of promos for our memberships uh, here as well. So yeah, go ahead and take, come say hello. Thank you guys. Thank you. And thank you so much for hosting us and for the coffee this morning. This morning, Ashwini Rao and Narendra Ja are going to be speaking to us about social media impersonation and AI. And actually, small businesses, over 200 million small businesses use social media and one in eight have the opportunity to be to have an imposter. So it should be very interesting. One in eight, we're going to learn some techniques on how to prove to protect ourselves in this scary world that we're in. And they are with Idle. Idle is a new startup. They've won the best startup idea at Carnegie Mellon. And they are part of the NVIDIA inception program for promising AI startups. So with that, please welcome them. We will take Q&A at the end. Ashwini, Marisa. Okay. Hello, hello. All right, so if we begin with the presentation. Yeah. All right. Well, hello everyone. It's uh, so nice to be here. This is our first time, but we are already very excited. We've been excited for about a month or so trying to prepare for this uh, uh, event. So we are going to talk about the top the topic which is listed here, the problem of social media impersonation. Maybe most, some of you have uh, heard about this or have uh, or know a friend or a family member who has faced this problem. We'll look at some concrete examples of this problem uh, in this talk and we'll talk about how artificial intelligence, AI, can be used to solve or address uh, the problem. And finally, we'll leave you with some tips to protect yourself. Uh, on, on your business. So let's let's begin. So you know when Russia invaded Ukraine. You know we actually need to present on the Zoom as well. One second, folks. Uh -oh. Zoom. Where is it? 
Okay, and if you can go on share okay. screen. Mm -hmm. Now you should be able to go back. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. yeah, can you confirm that it's actually visible? Okay. Thank you. Mm. All right, let's start again. Uh, so, you know, a, a while ago, the whole Russia-Ukraine conflict happened. It's still ongoing. And when that started, we saw a steep increase in impersonation related to Ukraine. And one specific <clears throat> example is impersonation of the president of Ukraine. And what I'm showing you on the screen is a concrete example of that. So what you see above is the official account of the president of Ukraine. Um, you probably noticed the blue check mark, which as you might know, is how social media platforms verify you and say, yes, this is you. You know, this is the legitimate entity. You might also notice that there are 14 million followers. At the bottom, you see another profile, which is, very similar. Uh, the profile has copied the picture, uh, has a very similar social media handle, and in the bio claims to be the official account. You might also notice that there are around 500 followers. Now you might ask me, Ashwini, who falls for this? Do they, does anyone really fall for this? Unfortunately, yeah, people fall for it all the time. And as we, in the, in the coming slides, I'm going to present a few examples and talk about the motives, incentives for scammers, as well as why people might fall. Okay. Let me just uh, uh, say here that social media is huge in terms of the number and the impact, the psychic impact it has on us in today's world. These are some of the numbers just to give you an idea. Uh, there are 4 billion users on social media, and by social media, I mean Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok. There are 200 million businesses and 50 million plus creators slash influencers. So people, these users, how do they use social media? And we try to uh, stay connected with, with our friends and family. Uh, we try to follow our favorite brands and businesses on social media. Businesses use social media to promote their new products and offerings, try to create a follower list, right? Again, using social media and creators and uh, influencers, they are they share characteristics with both the user and a small business to create content, post them videos, pictures, again to generate revenue for themselves as well as to stay connected with the general community. So all in all, the impact that it has is huge and it's growing exponentially. Impersonation on social media is a huge, is, is a growing problem. In recent years, especially during COVID and, and, and later, fake profiles have uh, defrauded millions of customers on social media. Again, those platforms I mentioned, Instagram and so on. These are some of the statistics uh, backed by federal agencies, Federal Trade Commission and so on. One in eight people have been impersonated on social media in 2021. More than four billion dollars have been lost by U.S. consumers in year 2020 to impersonation scam. The kind of scam that I think that uh, gave an example of. There have been 274 percent increase in brand abuse and impersonation attacks in 2021 compared to 2020. And again, the role of COVID has to be understood here. You know, when COVID uh, happened, you know, it sent most of us, if not all of us, to to online shopping and just. Be online to, to follow and connect with people and places we, we, we would like to connect to. All right, so let me go to some concrete examples. Um, the first one so, why do scammers do this? What do they want to get out of it? You know, why do they create impersonation accounts or profiles? Identity theft, right? This is not new. You know, if you have received a phishing email or you have received a spam call or a text message, similar, 
just it manifests slightly differently on social media. So what do they want, right? Well, they want to get your financial information. They want to get sensitive personal information, login credentials. And on social media, they also have a direct message channel. Um, okay, so what I'm showing you here is a fake profile of a bank called Varo. Some of you might know this, this this bank. So what happens? So let's say you're a customer of Varo, right? And as part of your business, you want to pay someone. It's a great deal. You want it right now. You go, you want to pay. Something happens and you cannot pay. So what is your you know, mental statement? You're disappointed. You're angry. You want like, I want this fixed right now. So maybe you call them and there's a long wait time. You want to go on social media and you want to contact customer care. Now, remember, you, any of us are upset and most likely we're not paying attention. Right, we are not paying full attention. So you go, you come across this profile, you're searching, okay, where is Varo? Where is its customer service? And you find this profile. There is a good chance you might just think of this as the real profile. And that's what scammers want. You know, they whenever there's a sense of urgency or there's you know, people are emotionally vulnerable, that's where scams happen most of the time. Okay, so another example, fake services. We see a lot of impersonation profiles of guess who, of psychics. This happens a lot on Instagram. And why is that? Right? I mean, if you think about it, people who go to psychics are emotionally vulnerable. Maybe they lost a parent, they lost a pet, they, they just need emotional support and so maybe it's 12 a.m and you're feeling down and you get a message you know you're on social media you get a message saying hey do you want a psychic reading maybe it's from like a famous psychic right you know like yeah okay you know maybe you're a follower of that psychic on social media and then you get a paypal link hey pay 200 bucks for you know for this reading and then you pay right and then what happens Nothing happens because it's a non-existent service. But then the customer who paid is probably upset, either angry, thinking that the legitimate business has defrauded them, or they're just angry that why is this business not doing anything about this, these fake profiles? Another one, counterfeit goods. And this is a much bigger problem. So we didn't even mention the $4 billion loss, but that really is not counterfeit. Counterfeit is even more in trillions of dollars. So, I mean, who doesn't want a good deal? I mean, I would love to buy a bag, right? A designer bag for less. Well, I want the real one, but I would love to pay less. And scammers know that, right? They know our psychology. So, Here's a great deal, you know, pay $1,000 for a $2,000 bag. And I'm like, yeah. Well, you pay, and then what do you get? A lookalike. All right, this is big. Fake news. I mean, who hasn't heard of fake news, right? And so the previous examples I was giving, they are pretty much financially motivated, right? There's a financial incentive. But when it comes to fake news and misinformation, there are entities among us that are not necessarily financially motivated. There are other you know, incentives for them to do this. But you know, many, many of us value news coming from mainstream media, right? It's not like we always go to the fringes and are looking for certain theories. So for like, and again, going back to the Ukraine-Russia conflict, when it first happened, there was a lot, people were emotionally upset. I mean, they're still upset, but the whole thing was changing so fast, right? And here's an example, you know, breaking news, BBC, France and this to Russia. Well, Russia had just gone and invaded Ukraine and there's a lot of uncertainty, you know? and. If someone read it and thought this was indeed coming from BBC, they might, you know, believe it. Lastly, you know, scams. Well, we all know it. 
Again, going back to the Ukraine, the Russia conflict, there's a lot of humanitarian aid going on, right? Most of them legitimate. But then, you know, there are scams and scammers, and it's a great opportunity for them to seek donations and run with your money. And now, if you think it's actually coming from a legitimate source, you know, the need for help and seeking help, you might actually pay them instead of some Joe asking for, hey, give me your money. So let me uh, uh, come in here and talk about ourselves, our passion. Uh, so social media impersonation is a huge problem. It has become a huge problem because of the societal impact it has on all of us. Uh, and you saw some concrete examples how. Uh, today, the age old question of who am I it has largely become who am I in social media? I, I didn't want to believe that. Uh, but that's the truth today for my, 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 myself. Uh, my professional career, who am I, my professional career? So I, I have another job. I'm a professor at the University of Southern California. In my professional career, who am I? And uh, how my uh, connections uh, know me? It depends on what's there on social media. Mostly it's just benign, but if someone were to impersonate my profile and tarnish my reputation, that way, it will be a disaster. I, I can't even imagine how it can really look like for me. So it's just an example of uh, how it, important it has become. And uh, the scams and impersonation problems we show the examples of, it can happen to any of us, given the number of users and businesses uh, active on social media. So one thing I want to say here, after emphasizing the scale of problem, is talking about solutions. So do we have a solution to the problem? The short answer is no, not really. There are uh, a few companies offering enterprise level solutions, charging $100,000 a year. If, if, if you are willing to pay that much, if you can afford to pay that much, uh, but that's it. And those solutions, I mean, we can go into the technical details if we want, uh, those solutions don't really address the problem that we have uh, today. So what we did, I see and I, we joined our forces, uh, given our expertise and background, insights about, about the problem, to build a solution which is affordable and scalable. So Ashwini is a cybersecurity expert. I'm uh, an expert in artificial intelligence and computer modeling, and that's what we brought together to build the solution. So let me just, uh, with one slide, without going into too much detail, uh, talk about the role of AI, artificial intelligence, in uh, in this solution. So here is a picture of uh, cats and dogs, basic and boxes around each one of them, and a label about the box. So what happens? Uh, artificial intelligence is a generic term. It is used to do perceptive tasks like visual perception, audio perception, and so on. Just like a human uh, does using human you know, natural intelligence. In case of uh, this impersonation problem, as you saw, most of the time the data, the problem uh, reflects in the social media profile the picture, the bio, the text in the bio, post, which we didn't even look at. They're all images and text, right? The problem becomes uh, of comparing pictures and identifying and detecting uh, logos and, and uh, and businesses. This is an example of how it can happen. Uh, an AI model that is trained on the right data and trained properly can detect the objects, in this case, cats and dogs, even though they are all different, like small dogs, big dogs, uh, different breeds of dogs. It is doing a good job in identifying the two uh, species. So, in summary, we, we can use AI for analysis at scale by analyzing profiles millions of profiles quickly and consistently uh, at high accuracy. We can analyze images and text, so logos of businesses and, and, um, and, and brands, bios and posts, from legitimate profiles that we are monitoring against all candidate impersonation profiles to find the, uh, the intent, which is whether it's an impersonation, attempt to counterfeit, uh, selling counterfeit goods, or infringing on trademark of the uh, monitor business. So where do you think this has an impact on the cost of using AI? 
Thanks for mentioning this. Yes. So because of the because of the scale at which AI can operate and its uh, parallel computing uh, uh, ability, it can really bring down the cost of doing this task, this, this perspective task. If a human uh, analyst were to do it, a cybersecurity analyst, as mentioned in the first uh, point here, they can achieve the goal, but only for one or 10 or 100 profiles in a day. It, it cannot be scaled, and it will be prohibitively expensive. So the answer is yes, AI can definitely bring it down and make it affordable for everyone uh, on social media. Uh, okay, so let's move on to some practical tips. So what can you do uh, to protect yourself and your brand? So there are many things you can do, right? And I will not, I won't have the time to go over all that, but let me just talk about four points. So the first one, so point one is maintain a clean presence. Now, what do I mean by that? So if you have old social media profiles that you are not using, and many of us do, we just either, you don't want to do anything about it or just forget it, but whatever, go home and delete them if possible. Now, why is that? So, you know, in cybersecurity, we call it the minimizing the attack surface. Let's say you have one profile. Now, a scammer can clone that profile. What happens if you have two profiles? Well, they can now clone two profiles. And when they clone more profiles, they have a higher chance of defrauding, victimizing, and fooling your customers and followers. So yes, go delete those old profiles that you're not using. And if you're creating new profiles, just, you know, understand this. More profiles out there, the bigger attack surface. And the second thing is verifying the profiles. Now this is more applicable to bigger brands that have multiple profiles. Now, what do we see? We see that, let's say there's a brand, they have five profiles on social media. They have, because they're a big brand, they can get like the blue verified check mark or with Instagram or with, you know, with TikTok. And we see two of them are verified and three of them are not verified. I mean, why is that? Don't know, ask the brand. But what happens with that? Well, this trains the followers and customers to just ignore the blue verified check mark. You know, they just go, okay, you know, yeah, I mean, I guess this belongs to the brand. Now the scammer comes along, creates a sixth profile, which is looks very similar, is not verified. Well, the customer's like, well, looks like the legit one to me. So yeah, so if you're a bigger brand, you have multiple profiles, please consistently verify all your profiles. The second point is monitoring. I mean, this doesn't have to be some fancy automated monitoring. You could just do it, some of it yourself. Some of it yourself, you could manually search for certain keywords, but have a policy. You don't have to do it daily, but have a policy. Are you gonna do it weekly, monthly, in a couple of months, right? Also designate someone. You know, in security, if it is not a task that's designated to someone, it just falls through the cracks. No one's gonna do it. Third point, understand your reporting options. And this is important. Let's say you do find an impersonation profile. What do you do now? You know, a lot of people think just asking friends to report the profile to the platform is their only option. No. Almost all social media platforms provide you with multiple reporting options. And you can do it yourself. You don't have to ask your friends or your followers. And it's also important to know that different options are given different priority by the platforms. And this is usually because of you know, regulatory requirements, reputational impact and so on. But there are different options through which you can report it. You know, there's counterfeit, there's trademark infringement, there's copyright violation. Of course, there's ID impersonation. 
generally in the order of priority, it is if you report counterfeit, it's given the highest priority, then there's trademark, then there's copyright, and then at the bottom is ID impersonation. And the last point, and this is specifically, you know, I want small businesses to take notice, is you can increase your leverage with the social media platforms. And what do I mean by that? So, so you found an impersonation profile, and then you you can now report it, right? It doesn't just have to be ID impersonation. If you had a trademark, and it's not a lot of money, it does take some time, you could report it as trademark infringement. So a scammer has cloned your profile. They have copied your logo, which is trademark with the US PTO. And that is given a lot more priority and registered trademark compared to you just having like no registration on your trademark. The same thing with copyright. Even if you don't register your copyright, um, you can at least put a notice and that requires three things. Copyright, the copyright you know, symbol, the owner, it could be you if you created the post, let's say, or it could be your company you know, and the year. This puts a notice, you know, if you put it this on every post, it acts as a notice and it improves your legal standing, both in court and with the platforms. So yeah, so these are not the only ones. Uh, there are many others, but these are some that not very well known. And this following these guidelines can really help when you report things to the social media platform. And when I say, you know, it helps, what it means is when you report something, the platforms take certain time. They might take hours or they might take weeks. And depending on how you report it, it might be hours or it could be weeks. So you want, if you want faster response, increase your leverage, you know, do certain things that can help. Okay, so I don't know how we are doing on time. Yes, yes if you want to go ahead. Yeah, you know, I'm happy to chat more. There's my email right there, my first name, dot last name at idle.com. Any issues you are having, you know, happy to help you out. Also, you know, we, I'm also on a startup. So if you're an angel investor who's passionate about this problem, talk to us. Uh, one thing I just want to say is that if you have tried any of those uh, tips that Ashwini uh, mentioned on the previous slide, if you know someone trying, if you know anything about it, please feel free to share your experience. How, how did it go and what was the final outcome? Thank you. Great, we are going to do some Q&A. You guys want to stay up here. Um, we're going to do some Q&A now. Keep them brief. Make sure they're a question. If you have comments, they're going to stick around for a little bit after. You can always follow up with them after. And then for those of you on the Zoom call, we will be moderating the Q&A through the Q&A panel at the bottom center. So please ask your questions. They're not in the chat window. Okay, John, go ahead. And yes, you guys uh, can come like a little bit right here. Okay. Um, that way people can see you on the Zoom. Well, thank you for giving us a very interesting talk about identity theft. I actually have some really good questions, but I'm going to start with some in the audience. Uh, I'd like to ask a specific question. You mentioned your propensity. You would be. You have to have your home. So I have been uh, I'm interested in identity theft. Say that I'm a professor and it would be a disaster if false information got on my site and I want to engage an AI solution. I want to build a website that's interesting to go out to design up to my course. What don't you want to see on that website that would and what don't you want to see that would make AI difficult to find? What do you want to see that would trigger AI right away to keep me safe? Okay. Let me understand and rephrase the question. So I think if I can summarize the question, the question is in the content generation phase, what can I do as a as an informed user? Uh, what can I do to make it easier for the algorithm or the solution to basically avoid impersonation right from the get go? I mean, in case it gets impersonated, make it easy to, to take it down, you know, whatever is impersonated. Uh, hmm. Okay. 
kind of thinking. Well, thinking, uh, you, know, uh, you, you want to take a yeah, I should, okay. uh, let me just add one point. So the big difference between having a website impersonated and having a social media profile impersonation is the content and the trait at which it's related. So if you think of a website, how often do you change it? I mean, yes, it changes, but not that often. But if you are on social media, you probably are posting quite regularly. Maybe you post every day, maybe three posts every day. Maybe social media manager can go crazy. So, so when it comes to identifying, right? We and her talked about AI models. They need to be trained. Like they need a lot of data to get trained, and it is it can get expensive if you're training it often. So, well, this is not really a solution, but it's a good thing that on website, if you're not changing your content often, well, it helps because your model is trained. Now it can just go ahead and do whatever it needs to do, which is compare your website content with everything else. Oh. Um, so that, that's definitely true. Uh, how frequently the content on the website changes determines how fast AI can uh, perform its job, which is finding impersonators and uh, detecting them then. Second thing I want to say is, uh, uh, logos. So if I'm doing it, uh, I will put uh, my employer's logo USB, maybe something from my lab. I do have a lab and I have, I don't have a logo, but I can, I should create a logo, which is a project becoming a picture and put it on every slide. Things like those uh, make it easy for the AI algorithm for the visual detection task because it will but it becomes much easier for the for the visual uh, perception task to to identify, look for the logos and and uh, identify fake versus real. Yeah. We have a question online. The question is from uh, a Zoom user, and the question is: What industry seems to be most impacted or have the most targeted victims by scammers and impersonators? Thank you. Great question, right? That's also uh, who are our early adopters. Um, crypto companies, psychics, um, banks. Banks is not me, but yes, because there's a financial incentive, right? I would say, yeah, those three. Um, mainstream media is also very, very impersonated. You know, if you go and check, CNN has, I don't know how many impersonation profiles. So is the New York Times, so is Wall Street Journal, and many of us, Fox News too. Um, yeah, so I would say those are some of the highly targeted um, areas or segments. The question that I wanted to ask you, and I think this is a great topic, and I think it's very uh, good timing. Friday Coffee Meetup in the past, has had a couple of guest speakers, and one of them, a company called Ventana, created Polygram. And a lot of these are, are celebrities, and some of these celebrities may not be alive. So that's, that's an example of technology where you can create an impersonation of somebody else. Another company that uh, came to speak here is called Open, O-B-E-N. And what they can do is they can take a selfie from a cell phone and create an avatar. And now you can program that avatar to speak different languages, to sing, and things like that. So the when it comes to identity theft, it seems like that is becoming easier to do. Photoshop, everybody knows you can easily use Photoshop for creating a uh, fake image. Now your company uses artificial intelligence to track these down. So I'm imagining that you are using you're tracking you're checking Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, Google, things like that. <laughs> But also seems like you need a lot of computing power. So can you talk a little bit about from idle standpoint, as a company standpoint, uh, you mentioned that you are um, looking for angel investors or raising money. What do you need that money for? And how are you going to generate create that computing power to scour the internet to find these uh, evidence of identity theft? Anyone want to take this question? Oh, I, I think you don't like to start. <clears throat> so yeah, so computer power is definitely required to train the models 
So what we offer, so as I said, you know, the content changes and you might have to train the model software. When it comes to small businesses, what we offer and how we reduce the cost, one of the ways we do it is we run on the system. You don't have to run it every minute of it. So that immediately reduces some of the computing requirements. Because that's enough for many, many, many businesses. You don't have to run your models every day. Um, what are we, what are we, um, well, there are some details of uh, how we run our models, which are all, which have all been uh, designed and uh, designed to address this issue of cost. So training the model and running the model uh, on cloud. And then also there's there is a bunch of detail you know, on cloud, what kind of instance you use and how often um, you demand the, 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 the instance can change the cost. There's on demand on Amazon web services and then there's um, what's the other one? On demand and then reserved instances. So you you can uh, you can uh, scale your cost by being very vigilant about the need for computing and um, uh, and where you run your computing. So that's one thing we do we keep a uh, uh, tab on. What's the um, the, the model itself, so AI is my area of research. So we uh, we we build our models which are very efficient um, in terms of number of computations they have to do to come to the final result, which is the intent and the objective of this. So there is a lot of research. It's the whole field in itself, as you can imagine. So good thing is that my lab and uh, my own research provides that input. So we are at the state of the art when it comes to AI modeling and generation and, uh, um, and accuracy. So that, that's a separate thing for computation. Same computation, uh, you, you can do the same computation efficiently or inefficiently. What I'm trying to say is that we try to be really, really efficient by using research as the backbone. Uh, I guess there was a component of what do we need money for? Or why we are using? Yeah. Okay. So we, you know, we are very one of the things that startups need money for is the technical thing, right? Um, we are, we have all sorts of things. So so far we have, you know, coded whatever is required, but to and we have initial customers. We want to scale. So we do want to hire some devs and we do want to invest in stuff. That's pretty much the short expansion I can give. Thank you, Dr. Nancy, what you do with Bob. Uh, we've got another question online. Uh, Latifi Kapoor is asking, if a business has a website, then what measures can it take to protect the website? Can we add certain security tags to the source code? So we are focused on social media, but yeah, my background is in security. I can go on and on, but let me just say yes. You know, you certainly want to add. Uh, okay, so there is the monitoring part, the finding part, and there's the takedown. So when it comes to websites, there's certainly the, you know, you can use HTTPS, ensure the data is encrypted between the customers, to, you know, wherever they're connecting from and your service. That comes to your website. Uh, can you add a code? Yes, there are some methods you can do, you can add certain JavaScript snippets or there are multiple ways you can add some code. So if someone actually copied your source code, your website source code, there is a way to run a tool, a script to see if they did copy that code. But however, I have to say that scammers are pretty intelligent. They, of course, you know, they can just take out that code. Anybody in the audience have a question? I actually do have another question for you. Uh, so part of you know, we not only talk about what the company does and what their business model is, what their idea is, but also uh, we, we like to question the uh, founders and the entrepreneurs as far as uh, building a company, scaling a company and, and things like that. So my question is, you mentioned a lot about computing power, using AI and scouring all of the social media sites and all that, that's a pretty big uh, task, obviously. So 
as a third, as an alternative to that, is there like a niche market that you can focus on where you can gain traction and then start to scale as you are building your customer base and generating income? And of course, that will then attract um, more investors and, and VCs to see that uh, do have that uh, uh, market acceptance, that market validation and a proof of concept and get to the next step and, and beyond. Yeah, excellent question, right? Um, yes, we do. And when we started, you know, as we said, yes, this is applicable to 200 million businesses and 4 billion people, but they are not all early adopters, right? There are many people who will follow when someone else is moving it. So we did look into it and we looked at who is having the biggest pain, who is getting impersonated all the time. What are they losing, right? Are they losing in terms of customers? Are they losing in terms of their time? Are they, and so impersonation is like a game of whack a mole For those who have the highest pay, you, okay, you found one profile. Do we, maybe you found the right way to report it. You fought with the social media platform to take it out. Guess what? Tomorrow, there's going to be one more. Right. So we, we have focused on those who have the highest pain, and that, by that I mean they keep getting this impersonation profiles all the time. It's a pain for them, their followers. I mean, you don't want to ask your followers to help you take on. That's the last thing they want to do. They might do it because they're nice, but it's not what they want to do. So yeah, so psychics. They are small businesses. They don't have much resources. They don't have the technical ability to do much about it. So they are willing to pay. There's also crypto companies and also small businesses. Maybe they have four or five employees. They are also some of them. And there's also, you know, since we got a few of our early customers, we are also focused on neo brands. So we have some of those companies. Now we are also going some, you know, working on some partnerships with you know, one of the Fortune 50 companies and finally becoming a data source. You know, if the company has an AI platform, I will plug in as a data source. So we have been very strategic about whom we have focused. And so that has helped us get our initial traction and focus. If I may have one more group that I haven't heard you mention, influencer. It seems like uh, they're becoming more and more influential when it comes to uh, business and e-commerce and things like that. Yes, uh, influencers are also, you know, a big segment. They also have the problem of, you know, the way they're facing is not just impersonation, the copyright violation too. So what we offer is two parts. We monitor, we find the impersonation profiles, and for small businesses, we also help them take down the profiles. And so, as I mentioned, there are multiple ways, and the problem with some of the small businesses, they don't have leverage. We go to the social media platform, we report it. We have to do it five times, six times, because they don't have much leverage. So we have been strategic in focusing on certain things. Um, and to answer to you, the segment we are very interested in, but we haven't yet like, totally gone after. Thank you both so much. Thank you. We're actually going to do a photo view in just a minute. Um, but for those of you that are online, please join us next time. We're going to be speaking with Francis Pilara, and he's going to be talking about developing smart cities um, with community and digital technology. So that'll be really interesting. He's an entrepreneur in residence for Los Angeles. So please join us for that. Um, Thank you to Founderspace and Lucky Coffee. And for those of you who are online, there will be general networking after, if you would like to stay on for that. It won't be with the speakers, but if you want to meet some of the others who are online, Toby, thank you, Toby, for leading our networking there. With that, wishing everybody online a peaceful weekend. We're going to turn you off, then we're going to get a picture of you two, and then we will open it up for open networking. So give me just a moment here. If you guys want to get uh, stand down here.